Good evening. Sorry, we're running just a little bit late here coming out of our executive session. The time is 737. I will call this public hearing and regular business meeting of the mayor and council for the city of Snellville, Georgia for Monday, August 27th, 2018 to order. Um, right before we have our invocation, I would like to um, let everybody know, if you're on Facebook, you've probably seen this, but um, the city lost a really great volunteer. Sorry, didn't realize I was going to get choked up. Nelson Williams um, has been a long time, I think lifelong resident of Snellville. Uh, went to the Snellville High School here. Um, he passed away on Friday. And it was, it's really, truly our loss. He has been so involved and engaged in this city, and he truly loved this city. Um, his wife had passed away about four weeks ago, and, um, and then Nelson passed away on Friday. Um, he had known, I mean, that was a great story, too. They had been married for 65 years, and they had known each other for 80 years. They started playing in the sandbox together at three years old. Um, but truly a, a wonderful couple, very involved. Um, Nelson was a former city council member. He's been active on our DDA, our Downtown Development Authority, for many, many years. And um, his guidance and his mentorship will be sorely missed. So if we could just have a moment of silence, and then we'll have the chief do the invocation. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. To say the pledge, we have a very special uh, person coming up. Stan Malden is going to do the pledge. He's here with, he's a Purple Heart recipient and is going to be involved in our proclamation coming up. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. It's an honor to be here with uh, you and the council. And uh, I've attended Loganville's uh, City Council quite often, but and, and I live in Snellville and been here for, uh, ever since 1972, and this is the first time I've been before this council. So it's an honor to be here. Thank you for inviting me to, to lead such an important thing here. It's, it's so much in the news nowadays, and we need to get it squared away, I think. Uh, however we stand, we need to get it squared away. Uh, please stand and, and salute or cover your heart and join me in the pledge to our nation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. Thank you, sir. Okay, we'll have ceremonial matters. We'll have Proclamation 2018-33, Purple Heart City. 
Whereas the people of the city of Snellville have great admiration and the utmost gratitude for all the men and women who have selflessly served their country and this community in the armed forces. And whereas veterans have paid the high price of freedom by leaving their families and communities and placing themselves in harm's way for the good of all. And whereas the contributions and sacrifices of the men and women from the city of Snellville who served in the armed services the armed forces have been vital in maintaining the freedoms and way of life enjoyed by our citizens. And whereas many men and women in uniform have given their lives while serving in the armed forces. And whereas many citizens of our community have earned the Purple Heart Medal as a result of being wounded while engaged in combat with an enemy force, construed as a singular, singularly meritorious act of essential service. And whereas this is a time to honor the service and sacrifice of our nation's men and women in uniform wounded or killed by the enemy while serving to protect the freedoms enjoyed by all Americans. Now therefore be it proclaimed that the Mayor Pro Tem and City Council do hereby declare the city of Snellville as Purple Heart City and proclaim August 27, 2018 as the day in which the city of Snellville will remember and recognize all veterans who are recipients of the Purple Heart Medal. Proclaim this 27th day of August, 2018. Um, what this is all about is I was contacted several months ago um, uh, from a, a recipient of this Purple Heart who they champion cities to become Purple Heart cities. And I don't know if you've noticed, a couple weeks ago, we had a Purple Heart um, uh, parking space reserved now here at City Hall. There'll be some also, oh, we've got pictures up here. Um, there'll also be some other activities and things that happen during the year. Um, there's a special day of recognition where we'll uh, shine purple lights up on City Hall. Uh, the, Brian Arrington, I put this off on him and he's been a champion on getting this done here for the city and he's worked with Matthew Bridges uh, who's also here tonight uh, with the he's the legacy and trail coordinator for the Purple Heart City so if, gentlemen if you'll all come up and then we'll get a picture and um, Matthew if you'd like to say a few words That'll be fine, right there. Yep, that podium is always a problem, but we got it. And one more. So with this proclamation, um, it joins the uh, many ranks throughout the state of Georgia uh, as a Purple Heart City. Um, the Legacy and Trail program is to honor and preserve our uh, medal, the Purple Heart medal, uh, those, the medal that's been issued to those who have been wounded or killed in combat. The Legacy Trail program encompasses not just cities and counties, but all entities that want to honor our Purple Heart recipients. Um, so it encompasses schools, uh, businesses, uh, states, roadways, everywhere. Um, so we sure appreciate you joining that, uh, that long line of, of entities in the state of Georgia. And um, it, please check out uh, MOPHHQ.org uh, to the national trail list of which Snellville would now join the ranks. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, nope, that's for, that's for you. you.
thank you and again thank you all for being here tonight it was it's great to see all of you um, come out for this and uh, thank you for your service and before you leave I don't know if you've been to this novel veterans memorial right outside in front of City Hall but make sure you stop by and, and uh, visit the memorial there oh that's awesome thank you Okay, next we, we are adding a second um, proclamation. Yeah, that one. This is Proclamation 2018-34, World Duchenne Awareness Day. Whereas Duchenne muscular dystrophy is the most common fatal genetic disorder diagnosed in children, affecting pr approximately one in every 5,000 live male births each year. And whereas the Duchenne gene is found on the X chromosome, it primarily affects boys. However, it also it, it occurs across all races and cultures. And whereas Duchenne results in progressive loss of strength and is caused by a mutation in the gene that encodes for dystrophin. Because dystrophin is absent, the muscle cells are easily damaged. The progressive muscle weakness leads to serious medical problems particularly issues relating to the heart and lungs. People with Duchenne typically live into their late 20s. And whereas Duchenne can be passed from parent to child, but approximately 35% of cases occur because of a random spontaneous mutation. In other words, it can affect anyone. Although there are medical treatments that may help slow in its progression, there is currently no cure for Duchenne. And whereas because it is a rare disease, one of our greatest tools in the fight to end Duchenne is raising awareness. And whereas on September 7, 2018, the fourth World Duchenne Awareness Day will take place. Duchenne organizations around the world will raise awareness for all people living with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Now therefore be it proclaimed that the Mayor Pro Tem and City Council do hereby proclaim September 7, 2018 World Duchenne Awareness Day in the city of Snellville and encourage the residents of the city of Snellville to increase their understanding and awareness of Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Proclaim this 27th day of August 2018. Um, this is a particular note. Um, our planning director, Jason Thompson's child, was diagnosed with Duchenne's last year, I think, wasn't it, Jason? last year. My family's also been touched with muscular dystrophy. Um, we don't have uh, Duchenne's in our family. It's Becker's muscular dystrophy, which is a little milder form of muscular dystrophy, but still causes it's the same loss of dystrophin and, and muscle weakness um, that you see. And you might notice um, September 7th is Labor Day, which is typically the Jerry Lewis uh, telethon uh, for raising money. So Jason, if you want to come up. Okay, next we'll have the approval of the minutes for the August 13th, 2018 meeting. Motion to approve the minutes of the August 13th, 2018 meetings. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. It's five in favor and none opposed. We have no invited guests, uh, committee and department reports, Parks and Rec. Uh, Brittany Marmel. Good evening, Council. We had our last our meeting last month, and I just have some updates about the summer. So all of the summer swim lessons sold out for the city, and the uh, swim parties were a big success. The summer tournaments had about the average turnout as the last few years. 
one of the movies was rained out, but then they hosted it later. But they're hoping to have another movie in the park later this fall when it is cooler. Fall leagues are beginning, including three or four year old teens for soccer, which should be very entertaining to watch. And the last thing was that the board approved the Snellville Days contract agreement with GRM. Are there any questions? Any questions of Ms. Marble? Thank you, Brittany. Next, we have Snellville Tourism and Trade, Kelly McElhinney. Good evening, Mayor Pro Tem and Council. Our last stout board meeting was held on October 20th at Summer Chase Country Club, and uh, our organization is very strong and in a very um, great standing, so uh, we're healthy. So uh, that's exciting to report. Um, our Commerce Club is coming up in September uh, 4th, and we'll have Carol Townsend speaking, so we invite everybody to join us. That's at noon to one at Snellville City Hall in the community room. Fratelli's will be providing lunch. And this past um, weekend, despite all the rain, we had a really great concert, the Doobie Brothers concert uh, experience. Several of you attended. Uh, the crowd was good, but the rain, I think, held some people off, but it was still an excellent concert. So thank you for everybody who could come and support. It was, they did a great job, and we've had a lot of positive feedback. Pictures aren't up yet, but they're coming. So uh, September's going to be a busy month. We start with our food truck Friday, September 7th. Um, hopefully no rain. The 15th. Next, the following weekend, we come around with our Taste of Snellville. We'll have over 25 restaurants out on the green, so please join us. And then we'll conclude our concert series on September 22nd with Benny and the Jets and Elton John Tribute Band. Um, they've been asked to return. They were so good last year, so don't miss out if you're an Elton John fan. Um, as always, we want to thank our Team Snellville volunteers because we could not do what we do without them. So, and I want to thank uh, the council who, who, when they come to events, do stay around and help, and I appreciate that. And, and I want to say special thanks to Council Member Schultz for all she does uh, as helping with the vendors for the Fall Festival because that is a very large job, as you know, uh, and she does it quite well. So. Uh, I, I appreciate that, and the time involved that you put into that is very much appreciated, and I thank you for that. I uh, want to thank our sponsors, because without our sponsors, we couldn't do what we do either, and we have two Keystone sponsors, and I'd like to recognize them. Eastside Medical and Walton Gas stepped up this year, and that means they're sponsors at all events. And the Gwinnett Citizen is a bronze sponsor at all our events this year as well. So thank you to them. Thank you to our Public Works Department, who always prepares the city for us for all our events, and to our uh, Snellville Police Department, who we couldn't do without them. They keep us safe at every event. Um, and I want to conclude and just say on behalf of Snellville Tourism and Trade and all our board members, you know, we want to express our sincere um, condolences to the Williams family. It is a very big loss for the city. And we all loved Nelson very much, and he'll be very missed. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Next, we have the Snellville Youth Commission, Chris O'Donohue. Hello, good evening. Um, so as many of you are aware, the Snellville Youth Commission has officially kicked off its year. Uh, we had our first meeting of the year two weekends ago where we welcomed 10 of our new members that were also inducted here in the, at the Snellville City Council meeting. Um, we also were able to have our elections, so within the next week or so, we will be uh, installing our youth, youth council members uh, who we have a lot of plans for this year to be a little bit more uh, active and visible in the community. Uh, in addition to that, we started preparing for our September meeting, uh, which is going to be a, a pretty big meeting. Uh, what we're going to do here is give the students an opportunity to tour the city of Snellville and to kind of see the things that are coming to the city. We're going to start off with a tour of the uh, the 
excuse me, the farmer's market on that Saturday and go to the proposed uh, location of the Snellville Town Center. We'll also be visiting a local business, Tomco, um, who's excited to have them and talk to them about what the city has to offer. Then we'll do a small tour of the city to help them see the developments that are coming. Um, and the overall goal is to help them see what's good in Snellville and to encourage them to come back and what they can look forward to after they've graduated and gotten jobs and so on and so forth. Um, in addition to that, we have also started plan planning our second youth forum. Uh, some of you were there at our first youth forum, but we are planning that one, which will be happening on October 20th, uh, where, we'll be, where we will be inviting uh, local um, officials and community leaders to talk to the students about uh, issues that are pertinent to them and see different perspectives of those issues. Um, and that's all I have. Any questions? Any questions? Thank all you, right, Chris. Thank you. Okay, next we'll have the approval of our agenda. Is there a motion? A motion to approve the agenda. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. It's a motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Five in favor, none opposed. So we'll move into our public hearing. We have one item, item A. It's the second reading for CUP 18-03. Consideration and recommendation on application by 2775 WM LLC and PNC Bank NA for a conditional use permit for a retail automotive parts store and O'Reilly's Auto Parts and request for variances from the Snellville Code of Ordinances for the 1.487 acre property zoned BG district and located in the corridor overlay district at 2775 West Main Street, Snellville, Georgia. Mr. Thompson. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, what you have before you tonight, uh, once again, is a request for a conditional use permit for a parts store, uh, O'Reilly's to be exact, on the corner of West Main Street and Fountain Drive at 2775. Uh, the property owner is uh, PNC Bank and the applicant, of course, is O'Reilly Auto Parts, represented by Mr. David Kelly uh, tonight. Um, the building was uh, originally built some 30 years ago and has been a bank inhabitant for most of that time until PNC uh, shut down uh, several months ago. It's a 1.487 acre parcel and includes the frontage on Fountain and West Main Street uh, up to uh, the further development up front or in the rear, excuse me, to the north. Uh, if you'll look around, the current uh, land use is for commercial retail. You also see that it's basically uh, surrounded by BG, which is our better biz general business district that allows for mostly uh, commercial and retail uses that can be found pretty much up and down 124 and highway 78 are two main commercial corridors and as you mentioned as well it is in the uh, corridor overlay district uh, the applicant uh, originally submitted the plan um, sorry that you can see here uh, this is the revised plan. Originally, um, they had submitted for some uh, several variance requests um, and then did just the conditional use permit um, from the corridor or overlay district. Um, after we uh, reviewed those requests and we had um, some hardships with them, uh, we remet with um, the applicant uh, to discuss the site plan. And at that time, before uh, we had seen the planning commission, they agreed to um, basically withdraw their uh, request to remove the 10-foot wide landscape strip on the front, um, withdraw their request for to, to not provide a sidewalk on Fountain Drive. They added the sidewalk. And uh, they had requested, uh, there's a code in the corridor overlay that requires any building that's under 7,500 square feet to um, place the majority of its parking to the side or rear. So um, they actually increased the footprint. And just to be clear, um, as I originally looked at the application, I thought it was going to be a reuse of the existing building, and that's not the case. Um, they've actually um, shown that they're going to take that building down. Uh, there's a lot of uh, logistical problems with using an old bank, mainly the way it's set up and then the vault. Um, if you guys remember the brand one, 
coming down up on the corner, it took them like three weeks to get that vault out of there. So um, they're going to start over and basically uh, redevelop most of the site with having some of the parking spaces uh, remain. We also had some concerns about the full access drive on the southernmost part of the property adjacent to Highway 78 on Fountain. Concern that the traffic coming in um, right off of uh, Fountain Drive could cause conflict with some of the uh, traffic to the north and uh, mainly the hospital and some of the medical uses. So they agreed at that time to uh, turn that into a right in, right out. And that's the site plan um, you're looking at right now. Also, after the Planning Commission, we realized that there were some uh, embedded variances over here uh, that were not initially uh, part of the letter of intent. So we conferred with the applicant and uh, asked them if they, w they wanted those to be included. They said yes. So we um, have revised the Planning Commission report and also your staff report to consider uh, these two variances. One of the variances um, that was added was to allow a minimal amount of the landscape strip kind of where it touches the parking lot here. So small you can, you can barely even see it. Uh, to be encroached with um, the existing curb there. And because it's such a small and negligible strip, um, we will support that variance, really more of a technicality. And then the other larger uh, variance is something that we um, confront a lot with redevelopment, especially on existing uh, developments that have been there before the advent of stormwater management and water quality, which we've seen in just the past several years, the uh, regulations get tighter and tighter and tighter. And that's usually dictated um, from all the way down from the federal government to the state government to the county and then ultimately falls on us to enforce. So um, when you're doing a redevelopment of this kind, um, whenever you remove any pavement, you get values as far as your um, and your, your curve number, which relates to how much water you have to detain or treat. Well, when you do a redevelopment, anytime you scratch um, or remove an impervious surface like a parking lot, even if it's already existing, if you remove it and even if you put down more green space, you have to treat that area in the equation as an undisturbed forest, like it's just there with trees and that curve number uh, is much higher than an impervious surface. So what it basically does is it, during any redevelopment, if it almost forces you into creating some kind of new uh, detention facility. Uh, in cases like this where we want to encourage the redevelopment, especially on West Main Street, um, a lot of times these facilities have worked um, up until this point by detaining the water. I believe this one goes downstream to an existing pond across the road and then throughout another stream network. Um, most of the time it's being handled the way it should be already. But because of the rules, uh, we have the engineer, you know, he has to mark it and uh, basically uh, make sure that they add these extra water quality features, which in, in some cases can add a huge financial burden and a lot of times can just basically kill the deal. So. We conferred with our city engineer, Larry Ginn and, and, and uh, Rich Ettinger, about how they felt about it. And, and their biggest concern is, can the current system handle it? So their um, recommendation was to approve the variance, but conditionally based on a downstream analysis, which is a very thorough um, engineering uh, hydrology report that measures and uh, <clears throat> basically checks to make sure that what's in place can handle the new flows as well, which will be reduced because there's actually more um, pervious green landscaping than there would be with the old plan. And uh, he basically recommended if that was the case that um, it would be okay and appropriate to um, recommend approval for that condition. And if not, if the downstream flow cannot be accommodated per the code, then uh, they would have to do some kind of uh, stormwater uh, detention, retention treatment to make it fit the code. I'm sorry it was a little lengthy, but it's hard to understand for me sometimes even. so. Um, Basically, given the fact that it's an, on an existing retail parcel that's zoned for retail uses, uh, we recommend uh, approval of the CUP. We recommend um, approval of those small variances. There was one other variance about, I believe, about uh, interparcel access 
and there's really, due to the grade next to the Snow Velado garage, there's really no way to make that connection there. And to the north, it, you know, Fountain Drive already kind of serves as interparcel access because it's not a really highly traveled uh, road you can get in and out. So we recommended approval. So all that being said, we recommended approval and we conditioned the approval of those other variances as stated in your ordinance. And uh, should you choose to approve, we recommend that you approve it with the conditions dictated in uh, ordinance number 2018-11. Any questions? Any questions for Mr. Thompson? I have a question about the landscaping. Yes, sir. Uh, as I've said in the work session, I would very much like to see two four-inch minimum caliper trees planted. That part of Highway 78 is kind of like a concrete desert, and I think we need something to soften the landscape and add some trees to the area. So yeah, I think we can even do you one better. There's actually 150 feet on that frontage, so uh, they'd be required to place three trees there. Um, you could, uh, I don't have any problem with adding a condition that the applicant be required to place uh, four inch minimum DBH trees in the front landscape strip abutting US Highway 78. And that actually helps the applicant too because they get credit for those at a higher rate than the smaller trees. So uh, they won't have to make it up on the rest of the site as much. So uh, I'd be in support of that. Any other questions for Mr. Thompson? Is the applicant here? Mr. Kelly, if you'd like to come up and present your proposal. I I don't have anything to add, but I'd be glad to answer any questions okay. you might have. We, we have no problem with the tree request. Okay. So. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Kelly? Uh, Mr. Kelly, I know that some of the auto parts stores do um, do allow like the exchange of batteries in the parking lot or perhaps putting new windshield wiper blades on cars. What, what types of work will be done in the parking lot here? Well, first of all, there won't be any, I'm going to say, quote, unquote, work done in the parking lot. Typically, the instances where you see a battery get changed out or windshield wipers get changed out, no offense, but it's typically when a lady comes in and asks for that to be done. So, and it's and, very much appreciated. And so, they, and so they'll do it, you know, as a courtesy to someone who requests it. Um, if, if no one comes in and requests it, then it, it's obviously not offered. Um, and, it, and it's always something as minor as, mm -hmm. but I mean, I've changed out a battery before and they're pretty darn heavy. So it won't be anything more significant than that done in the parking lot. Okay. Never, never is. Anyone else with questions? You also have surrounding stores in Stone Mountain, Lilburn, and Loganville area. Are there any plans um, because of the proximity to Snellville store to close any of those locations? Not to my knowledge. I mean, I'm, I don't work for O'Reilly's directly. I'm a developer that develops stores for O'Reilly's. But um, to my knowledge, there is no plan to, to close any of the other stores. They, there's... It's kind of an interesting industry in that they kind of congregate together. And with the repair shops and the dealerships up and down Highway 78, there's plenty of business there for all those stores. Anyone else? Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Yeah, thank you. This is a public hearing, so I will open up the floor to public comment. If you'd like to come up and speak on this application, either for or against, please step up and give your name and address for the record. Seeing no public comment, I will close the public hearing um, and entertain a motion. Motion to approve CUP 1803 with the following addition or additional condition that three minimum 14 inch DBH trees be planted in the strip facing Highway 78. Okay, there's a motion to approve adding a condition. Is there a second? Second. And Mr. Kelly, are you okay with that? 
I just I, want to clarify for okay. the record. I thought Mr. Uh, Manuel said 14. You said four, right? No, but four inch. Okay. Just wanted to clarify. Okay. That. That's what I heard. <laughs> Just move the oak tree on down. <laughs> okay, I have a motion and a second. And is the applicant okay with the added conditions? Four-inch trees we're good with. Fourteen would be a problem. Okay. <laughs> good with four-inch? <laughs> and would any member of council like to make a comment before we take the vote? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. That is five in favor and none opposed. Your conditional use permit is granted. Next, we have our consent agenda, and we are removing item B, approval of agreement for use of the mobile stage by St. Oliver Plunkett Church. Uh, it was just brought up to us in the work session. Um, our city attorney, Mr. Powell, said that really the city's policy allows for these standard contracts to be approved for uh, nonprofits that are already on the list. This church was already on the list. Um, so this really should just be being handled administratively through the city manager. Um, so we're removing that from the consent agenda. So we just have uh, resolution 2018-09, amendment to the Youth Commission enabling resolution section eight, city and staff resources. All in favor of approving the consent agenda, please signify by right. Do I need to do a motion on that? I need a motion and a second, please. Motion to approve the consent agenda. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. It's a motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. That is five in favor and none opposed. We have no old business. Under new business, we have item A, consideration and action on approval of contract to acquire 2260 Oak Road Snellville tax parcel R5026256 and approval of subordinate contingent lease agreement and supporting documents for the Snellville Town Center. Is there a motion? Motion to approve the contract to acquire 2260 Oak Road, Snellville, tax parcel as read by Mayor Pro Temp, and approval of subordinate contingent lease at the price of $785,000. Thank you. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. That is five in favor and none opposed. Next, we have item B. I won't read all of this because you can read it in your motion then. But we have consideration and action on approval of the contract to acquire 2280 Oak Road. Is there a motion? Motion to approve the contract to acquire 2280 Oak Road, Snellville, tax parcel R5026275, and approval of subordinate contingent lease at the price of $850,000. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. second. We'll take Christy. Yes. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. That is five in favor and none opposed. With that vote, we have now acquired all of the property in the town center area that we've been focused on. <coughs> Next, we have item C, consideration and action on approval of resolution 2018-08 for financing of vehicles and equipment. Mr. Sanders, you want to give a... Mayor Pro Tem and Council, uh, if you think back to the adopted budget, uh, each year, uh, we have a list of equipment that we propose to lease and uh, this year it includes five fully equipped police vehicles, um, other police department necessities such as computers and tasers and one skid steer or uh, 
compact track loader as it's listed in the resolution for our stormwater department. Uh, the total amount of this equipment is $295,488.98. And I would ask that uh, the resolution be approved to uh, lease, uh, um, lease this equipment or pay for this equipment through a three-year lease with SunTrust. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. Is there a motion? Motion to approve resolution 2018-08 to finance the purchase of vehicles, equipment, and a tractor for the amount of $295,488.98. Um, finance with SunTrust equipment at a rate of 3.21 for three-year term. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. So motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Is five in favor and none opposed. With that, it, that ends our business portion of the meeting. We'll go into council reports. Council Member Marmel. No report. Ms. Linsky. My condolences to the Williams family. Um, just a incredible, incredible loss to our community. Also wanted to congratulate Kelly on yet another fabulous concert um, on the town green, Doobie Brothers Tribute Band. We kept the rain away pretty well, pretty well, minus a few drops. And one more announcement, the Battle of Snellville, South Gwinnett High School will host uh, Brookwood High School football Friday night, 730. Please come out, we would love to see you. And I can't wait to uh, give the trophy to South Gwinnett. Go Comets. <laughs> Council Member Emanuel. I'd like to add my condolences uh, to the Williams family. Uh, Nelson was a very humble person and never really spoke about all his contributions. But uh, he made a lot of them, and he certainly will be missed. Going on to something a little bit off topic, we went to Stone Mountain last Saturday night and saw the laser show. If you haven't been there, it's well worth the trip. Uh, I was kind of surprised, very patriotic, and everybody seemed to be very much in favor of the patriotic songs that were presented in the laser show. So if you're looking for some good entertainment, it's only on the weekends. Check the schedule at Stone Mountain, but it's well worth the trip. Council Member Schultz. I'd also express sympathy to the Williams uh, family. W one memory I have of Nelson and his wife Marilyn that, that many of you probably don't have is that he accompanied her to the hair salon every single week. He brought her and he sat there and he waited for her very patiently. And I often ran into him there and we sat and talked. And um, he was very, very devoted to her, and uh, I'm I'm just glad that they'll be re reunited. Um, I have some exciting Snellville Farmers Market news to share. Um, at the request of some of our vendors, we're going to this year start an off-season market, and it'll be held October through May. And it will be held on the first Saturday of each month. So just one Saturday each month from 9 to 12. Now this assumes that we can get enough vendors to participate uh, in the market to make it uh, financially feasible for us to pay for the uh, signage that, that we want to make for it. Um, it will be located in the parking lot, the City Hall parking lot, because we need to give the grass on the green a chance to rest for a while. Um, but we, for the most part, this market will be really a true farmer's market. We're going to have uh, produce, local meats, honey, eggs, um, and, uh, and uh, baked goods. We, for the most part, for these markets, we will not have crafts, but um, 
for our December market, we want to make that a, a special uh, Christmas market. So we'll invite some of our craft vendors to come to that so that folks can come and purchase some, um, some uh, Christmas gifts. Now, I'm really excited about this, and I'm excited that we're doing it for our vendors. They're the ones that have asked for it because many of them grow uh, winter vegetables. Our uh, meat vendors have meat available all year round, so this will give them an outlet to uh, sell meats. So exciting news. I'm going to be sending an email to the vendors tomorrow to let them know that the uh, council was in approval of this and that we're ready to find out who wants to participate. So we'll give you further information as we know more and we know who will be, um, which vendors will be at that market. Thank you, Council Member Schultz. And I too will add my condolences as well to the Williams family. Um, you know, Nelson was always good about, he'd come to the meetings and watch what was going on and and uh, he was a great mentor because if he saw you going a little off track or something he didn't quite agree with, he'd just pull you aside and let you know. Um, I was subject of one of his, uh, he yelled at me one day, actually. He yelled at me um, for doing something that, that he didn't agree with. And, uh, but I just always appreciated him uh, being here and working hard and uh, just caring about the city so much and not wanting to see anybody ruin anything and so he was always there kind of guiding what was happening and and uh, very supportive of all the progress that, that we've been making in the city and um, he will be dearly missed um, I did have something else and I didn't write it down and now I've forgotten it completely so with that we will end the mayor's report and we will open the floor to public comment if anyone would like to say anything, please come up and state your name and address for the record. We got a taker. <laughs> Marilyn Swinney, 1832 Glenwood Lane, Snellville. I'm here for something altogether different. You know, one day after one of our meetings here at City Hall, Mr. Ewing, you know, our historian, um, was walking out with me and he said, you know, he said, see these benches here? He said, they're actually part of the Snell family home. He said, nobody knows it. And I said, well, why isn't there a plaque or something? He said, I don't know. He said, I talked about it and talked about it and no one picked up on it. So I'm here to pick up on it. I don't see why we can't have a small plaque put on those benches so that people know that it's part of our history. Okay? I'll look for it tomorrow night. <laughs> Thank you. Could you maybe find out exactly how they should read? Pardon me? Could you find out how the plaque should read? What it should no, say on there? No, we probably would have to ask you Mr. Know, Ewing. Yeah. yeah we'd be better off. But I mean, there should be something explaining. Um, it could be the school. You know, probably need to find out where they're at. Well, that's why I said call yeah, I, I think I've been told that they were the steps for the, the rock school. Was that it? Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, we need yeah. to identify it. Okay. Because we did, we uh, gave one of those Well, thank you for the idea. I think we can handle that. Anyone else have anything? Seeing none, we will take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your right hand. It's 5-0. We're done.